Hello and welcome to the next uh, part of our Painting Buddha Academy videos. Today we will be showing you uh, how to paint bones, horns and hooves. A goat's horn um, varies with the age. The older the goat, the more um, structured. structured, yes, and more crooked the horn is. And um, this is important actually for, for uh, when we want to paint the, the horn. As uh, Anschut the Cursed uh, is supposed to be a pretty old war warlock, we thought that he's rather an older goat. So that uh, directly impacts how we will paint the horns, actually. There will be much more of these little light points uh, in the lower part of the, of the horn. And um, generally the idea is to um, let them fade out into black at the end. So um, you can really see how ancient and uh, old actually <laughs> he must be. To see on the palette cam um, is a Chardon granite that we also used on uh, the fur uh, of the rhino before. Uh, it's good to use similar colors uh, to keep the harmony and uh, the balance of, of the miniature. So there will be a Chardon granite here, um, a little bit of the Deneb stone. Here we have a little uh, Commando Kaki, it's a Kaki color, and I will add a tiny little bit of it to the mix also. So we have this grayish, uh, little brownish tone here. We put a, one layer of uh, Sheridan granite on the horns. The thing that we want to do now is to create a pretty smooth transition from uh, a lighter tone from the, um, the stem, so to say, of the, of the horn down here to a black, to a black here. I've seen this many times um, painted the other way around, which is actually uh, Just, wrong in nature. Yes. Although th there might be some animal somewhere that uh, that actually has, uh, has the colors the other way around. Mm -hmm. so. Things like that you can really find out if you, if you um, observe carefully pictures of what you are about to paint as we <laughs> always do as you might have figured out by now um, we really like to see uh, to look at the reference rather than uh, at what uh, we think uh, is true on this horn we use the uh, we want to create a one smooth transition first and for this we paint it uh, in a, with a wet blending technique Wet blending technique means that we have two colors that are wet on the miniature and uh, we put the color on um, from one side, like the one color that we have and then the darker color. We just allow them to kind of float into one another. We put them in their place and then slowly work our way down. So for me as a non-painter that sounds like you're mixing the color right, right on the spot, on the miniature. Yes, it's uh, basically what uh, what it means. Okay. Yes. And with this you can uh, create uh, very subtle, very um, nice transitions actually that uh, really um, would take a lot of time if you would uh, try to do them with a classical layer uh, style, meaning that you would go in and try to paint them uh, layer by layer. Yeah, it makes sense to make it like this then. <laughs> so for the next step, uh, as long as this is still uh, wet. I will add a little bit of the Deneb stone to the mix and the same thing I will put it down here at the stem here. Clean the brush quickly and then allow it to sink into the, the horn. Yeah the other one is still a bit lighter as you can see so Matt is putting a little bit more of a light color here. What was that? Deneb stone? Yeah, that's the Deneb stone, yes, from the foundation range. That's a really nice color. It's, it's a mix of sand and gray. Yes, actually it is. Um, I really love the, as you might also figure out by now, I really <laughs> like the, the old foundation uh, color tones. Uh, they are substitutes that I uh, slowly begin to use also uh, because uh, they are really difficult to get by now. But um, as long as I, as I have them around, I, <laughs> I use them. Also, they have this uh, nice uh, covering abilities that they cover with just one um, one go. Ah, okay. And remember that this is not um, not like the reflex light, the, the highest light, but this is more like this um, global light that we mentioned in the earlier videos. It is uh, something like a transition of the of the surface rather than little light points that are uh, added. 
So the next step is to um, add a little bit more black into this area here. And for this we have also the Sheridan granite that we mix with a little bit of the black here. Finding a, a good black is not so easy. I really prefer blacks that have a, a, a satin finish to them, like the old Chaos Black from Games Workshop. Yes, and you see the consistency here is um, it's a, like a layer. It's um, not um, super thin. Oh, that's that's really nice. It's a extremely dramatic effect just with a little bit more black. Mm -hmm. You can uh, then clean the brush and um, pull it down just a little bit. With this, it's really important to kind of allow every um, every tone its its space, which sounds a bit complicated, but um, yeah, but it makes sense. You mean like. In this case, uh, three or four sections of different colors, and they're all visible for themselves. So, it, so you yes. can actually really see each each on their on its own. This is the black section you see, exactly. and then you have the the medium tone, and it's a little transition here for, with the black, and then ideally here you uh, you have a, a, a third tone, uh, like here you see there's a little yellow here. Yeah, it's good to know where every section is and not to overdo it and now to go with the black down here or so, it will not look so good. So we have the base tone here, uh, the Deneb stone, the Chardon granite and a little bit of the Commando Kaki. And um, with the horn again, um, the lighter part will be down here. And pure Chardon granite will be around here. And then the black will be on the tip here. So that's the color sections you mentioned just yeah. before. Yes, yes. Now I do it more explicitly. <laughs> yeah, it's, because it's easy to see now yeah. what, uh, what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And now with the clean brush, you can start to kind of bring them all together by pulling them or dabbing them down like this. And you see very quickly you get a... Um, it's not so sure. I'm not so sure if you can <laughs> see it, but black and then it becomes lighter here. Since this is wet, you can really now go in and, um, for example, if this is not light enough, just bring in some color again. It's the same with this horn. When you then start to add little highlights to it, the you will understand the form better again. Like you will have the best of all worlds, so to say, you have the smooth transition, but you have also the the shape is also described by the little light reflexes that come on the uh, around the horn, but the texture is something we uh, we will take care of in the next step. In case you liked it more before when it was darker, um, you can still go in and um, mix some of the black again uh, in a glaze-like consistency like this, and then. Put it here where the black is in the black section and then start to pull it pull it down again. For the next step we have some Griffion sepia from the wash uh, range. It's very important to know the uh, properties of your colors and uh, it's very practical to have them on, on the lid uh, already so you see what you get. <laughs> so for the Griffion sepia you see uh, it's a very it's a great color that um, that uh, even if you apply it thickly, uh, will not really cover the um, the color underneath. It will also build some kind of volume, um, and therefore we can use it perfectly to tone and to um, satinize parts. I don't believe that's a word. No, well now <laughs> it is. <laughs> we will use the, uh, these properties to to bring in another uh, color and um, slight change in. Um, in texture or in shadow into the stem of the horns here. Oh, that's interesting. It's uh, subtle but way more saturated in this spot now. Mm -hmm. You can also see it here. It's this little yeah. different tone, you know, that you don't find up here, which really makes this um, an important addition actually to our uh, horns. Just a little bit, you know, just place it here and then uh, we'll clean the brush fast and then uh, pull it up 
a little and allow it to dry. In case you wonder why we removed the banner, actually, <laughs> it's, uh, it's way easier to see the horns like this without the banner. That's why we removed, the, uh, removed it for now. The next step will be to add a bit more of the denim stone to the base mix. Because now we uh, will add small um, additional light to, to the stem of the horns down here. But this is um, now to, to give it structure and yeah to actually to, to, to give it uh, yeah to give it back some some of its own tone actually because uh, the steps before you know uh, with the with the washes they they made this uh, look pretty muddy and pretty dirty actually. And in this step, we can also um, start to define the uh, these lines, you know, these um, the contours of uh, of the horn plate. Okay, and with this step, we have redefined the uh, the color and the light. Uh, situation that kind of vanished uh, with the wash before so now we start to paint the the shape that or like the the ridges the ridge of the horn so the eye understands more what um, what it is with this step finished um, the foundation is prepared for the little light reflexes that you see on the left side for this we use the we use a bleach bone and mix it with a little white, which creates an ivory tone. It is a great tone to um, to build up light with these little uh, light reflexes. Keep in mind that you don't use pure white for this. Uh, the, the little yellow that is inside of the cream color is, is very good to avoid chalkiness and also um, it still leaves you some space um, to the pure white if you need it. And with this we try to, um, to catch um, these little, very, or to build up these little, yeah, shiny spots here. If they get too big, you can use the, the gypsy brush to, to brush them down sideways. Also, you can um, use the cream color here in the base tone again to add some little lines here too at the stem of the of the horn to make the transition less dramatic at this place in the black it's good you know because uh, it is it really gives a high contrast and uh, like a sh at the last shine at the end but uh, down here you should um, you should not have a nearly black here yeah if that makes sense uh, yeah, yeah it makes sense Lighter color has some, has more reflection than darker color, so to say. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you might even use um, nearly pure white. And for this, you need a very steady hand, a very sharp eye. And a pointy brush. And a pointy brush. <laughs> Sometimes one little uh, light point makes a huge difference. So I guess there is um, no big secret to that, just uh, to observe and um, try to see where these little glossy uh, lights are actually at, uh, at the things that we want to paint. Also, you can then go into with the, with the Sheridan granite, with the base tone and the little black to refine the the these spaces here for example that have been too big in a with a glaze like consistency but be careful with this because you don't want this to be to look um, uh, dirty or um, rough try to refine these uh, these these big reflections here try to cut them smaller so to say with the color okay and one of the last tests would be to take the griffin sepia um, color <laughs> this tone um, and Add some some very very tiny uh, far, uh, color nuances here at the side and colorize uh, them back so they are not only gray or you know gray and white.
and um, yeah, that would be how you paint the horns. You can also decide on adding a, um, a satin varnish or even a gloss varnish in this section here of the horns as they are very shiny often in, uh, in animals. Yeah, they get, they get uh, smoother uh, to the top. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. that's why they reflect more light. It will also increase the, um, the contrast. Shine always uh, gives an impression of a bit more depth. And uh, yeah, I think I actually like it with a little bit shine. So I think I will add some varnish to the to the top. Not so much as now because that will be a gloss varnish. Uh, I, I will use a, shine. yeah, I will use a satin varnish for this. Okay. Then we will continue with the hoof. So for the hoof, I have prepared some Commander Kaki here. And um, this here is the Umbra Umbra from the P3 uh, range. It gives a nice shade to, to the whole thing. We will have to apply this in one layer so that it covers actually the whole hoof evenly and nicely. Hoofs are generally very small parts. And um, when you paint small parts like this, it's important to um, paint them well or like in a high contrast so they really come out uh, in the miniature as you can see here. Okay we will allow this to dry uh, entirely and we'll be back in a second. Now it's uh, it's important to stabilize your uh, your painting hand because we will have to to draw little little lines like that. And this prevents trembling. Yes actually for these lines um, thicker color is better. And then you you paint these um, these lines down down the hoofs. Again, take some more color and um, paint another line just on top of what you painted before. It needs to be pretty um, covering like this. And one line sometimes is just not enough. After this step you increase the amount of white. And now only paint the very, um, the very lower end of the hoof. Or here, you see that the hoof is, uh, it has some kind of scratch on it. So you can also try to um, pay attention to this. The lighter you go, the smaller the area is that you paint with the, with the light and reflex. Okay, and uh, the next step is to increase uh, the contrast with some umbral umber with, um, with, the, with the base tone. And also a little bit charred on granite, also for the for the harmony and the balance of the colors. And this we will uh, need to thin down into a glaze-like consistency and add it to the top of the hoof. Into the fur here. Clean the brush and um, Pull it down a bit, but not too uh, too uh, too low. If your um, your white highlight in the hoof here is too big, you can go in and um, split it up with this tone again here. And that's uh, that's pretty much it for the hoof. Um, no big secrets here. If you want a certain type of of hoof or maybe a bit uh, a bit uh, shiny hooves. You can add a, a wash to this. In this case, that's the brown wash. You can um, put it on the hoof and then pull it down either on the whole surface or only in certain areas like uh, like the back here. And with this, it will leave a little uh, also shine to it when you turn it around. You can also try to paint um, to paint the, the wash more in these um, in these uh, crevices and cracks. Um, and with this, 
intensify, like enhance the contrast of the whole hoof. Here we have put the shark jaw banner on a little um, cork because that way you will be able to see it much better uh, without uh, any distractions. <laughs> okay, how to paint bones. Um, doing our research, we um, discovered many references that um, showed us regular bones as you might find them in um, deserts um, and uh, at the side of the road. Uh, and they are, they are pretty bright, but um, here we decided to do something differently. Um, we would like to achieve um, something like a petrified bone effect, you know, bone that is so old that it's um, already getting really dark. For this, I have a very special mixture, actually, that I developed, I don't know, quite a long time ago. Um, I, I might call it a mad bone. <laughs> so this is a shadow gray. It's, an again, an old Games Workshop color, but you can substitute it with uh, any gray blue tone. This is a, a Bestial Brown, Chaos Black and a Commando Khaki up here. We mix this in um, in a way where we can control the amount of blue, the amount of brown and the amount of black in it. And it, you know, when you mix them all up, you, you, you see it already here on the palette, it creates this really, really interesting grayish uh, tone. I think this is quite good here. And you can also play around here with the with the cream, and you will see where you eventually find uh, end up. So we start up with adding a layer of this color onto everything. Now we will mix some bone tone to it. Yeah, you see the difference, and uh, begin to lighten um, lighten it up um, gradually, step by step. We want, to, we want to apply this pretty thick. We begin to build up the light pretty classically uh, with layers. It's important to, um, to apply the color pretty thick because it will then um, create a smoother surface and we need a homogeneous um, and yeah, pretty, pretty thick um, surface at this uh, point. And again, this needs to dry. It's pretty thick, so we will have to use the blow dryer. I think I will paint the, the teeth, uh, I think, a bit uh, lighter than the bone itself, because teeth are usually f uh, from a bit different mat material uh, than, than bones themselves. They have the, uh, I don't know what the, what the name is, but they are covered with something that is the hardest material that the body can, can produce. <laughs> we could also paint them black, in order to make them look more um, dangerous. So many options. <laughs> I will decide on that, I think, when once the, the bone is uh, painted. But until now, I rather paint the, the jaws. And we will <laughs> do this again. We apply the color in a bigger surface and lighten it up gradually. As you see, it's not so fast as, for example, the um, grading up uh, with um, using using wet blending. It's uh, more classical, more slow, the layer technique. It's good for uh, to achieve a good uh, solid uh, foundation. You can also go in with the with the bit darker color while the, the cream color is wet and um, kind of try to um, break these transitions up a bit. Yeah, we do this so the difference between the colors is not so, so high. Okay, again, needs to dry. Next step is to um, apply a, a wash with Devlin Mud. 
the color that uh, will help us to unify the, um, the the layers that we did before and also to bring in some some darkish brown into the whole tone which will help to to really to um break, yeah to to make this uh, look more interesting and um yeah we apply it pretty um generously also again um try to avoid the the edge here that you painted try to paint it more in here here also here underneath the jar and uh, here i think the lighter teeth would look better than like yeah i think so too okay also from the back you will have to reload the devlin mud um quite often because you will end up uh, using <laughs> quite some some of it also you know it will float into these gums <laughs> into these uh, crevices here and um yeah, make it more easy for us to then paint the, the teeth uh, whiter afterwards. And uh, also the Devlin Mud looks very differently when it dries out. Okay, after checking back with the reference, we noticed that there is quite some green uh, in the bone. So maybe it is so old that it already started to... Um, Grow moss. To grow moss. <laughs> Anyways, I really wanted to bring in some green, maybe eventually into the the Anchut, <laughs> the beastman, because he is a um, an animal of the forest after all. So uh, we use this um, dark green model wash from Vallejo. I for think this. it will fit him quite well since uh, he himself is pretty pretty reddish, so to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A bit of green come. Yeah, it's, it's a good contrast, actually, I think. Okay, you see the, the brown and the green impact really helped to create something that looks pretty worn out and really old. After every wash, we have to correct the, the surface again with some of the base tone. So we mix the base tone with, again, with a little of the cream color with the bleach bone and the Komando Kaki here, like this. And we, um, yeah, we try to, to form some of these uh, volumes here back, yes. So now we will switch to the smaller brush because now we will go into the smaller details and we will basically continue to mix in more of the cream tone into um, into the into the color that we have been using before. A little bit of white also, not too much. And now we start to modulate the, the little details on here from the top and where the light would naturally uh, yeah, well, create little situations. <laughs> Like this, it's all, it's good to to work uh, with a kind of texture here, um, little you know dabs and work on all these dents and little I don't know holes. So it looks more worn and older. yeah. Basically, to you know to use the the step that we did before um, and break up the the surface. If this here was a one surface before this part, then with this little um, these little dabs, you can bring in additional texture to it. Also, at points like this here, you see where it's getting darker. Here, it's really good to to paint these because they come really they start to come out uh, really nicely. Basically, there is a light saw so, or like more light here, less light to the sides, and at the sides, like you have a big uh, portion of darker color, and something that happens in these uh, at the very edges here. It depends on how it is exposed to the to the same light source. Mm -hmm. Yes, it takes a little of a little bit of thinking when uh, when you're actually painting it, mm -hmm. but um, I think you get used to it. It's it's basically always uh, just 
painted from one direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if there is only one light source, that is. Yeah, of course. Okay, so much for this step. Now, more white, more cream, more light. And uh, now we even try to to paint even more little uh, textures into onto the the light if, um, highlight that we painted on before. It's important not to overdo it at this point, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. It I is. Thought, <laughs> I'd mention it because. Uh, yeah, yeah. No. No. Um, it's really important to only you know have a little very limited um amount of spectrum yes here what you see it's only on the very top here yeah and um but it's quite a dramatic effect yeah also we should not forget that we will now um also have to paint the teeth now when we want to separate uh, to paint the teeth it's important to separate them first from the draw and for this we simply take a little bit um, of the Devlin mud and um, give them a little wash, like a little very localized wash. This blocked out the teeth uh, really good. Mm, and um, we need to let this dry again. <laughs> As you see, it's a lot of drying actually when you paint bone. So I will let this dry and then we will um, continue. To achieve a good solid foundation for, for the white teeth, I have added some Deneb stone here. And we'll mix this gradually now with some sky white, uh, sky white. And we'll now uh, mark the teeth down like this. See how they look. See, the step is uh, pretty similar to um, to the hooves. You know the way you paint the teeth. So it's always with streaks into one direction. Yeah, you can actually streak it, or you can, um, what I was uh, aiming for now, uh, cover it with one uh, brighter layer first, and then add a little uh, very controlled highlight with white uh, to them afterwards. Okay. Because some things are, look better streaked, like uh, nails and hooves, and some, some things are better with a little white uh, highlight on them, like teeth. <laughs> Or black uh, black nails, for example. Okay, also. yeah, makes sense. Or like claws and things alike. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah, way better. They looks way more dangerous than before, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, it's uh, pretty rough, but we can work on that. Um, I added some Griffion sepia again to the palette, and with this we can um, we can try to bring some some bit different uh, color to it to it uh, at the top of the teeth and make them a bit more yellowish, as you see. And also this uh, this layer that uh, the Griffion sepia. Um, Creates this is very it's very practical for for teeth. Okay, again you will have to let this dry. In the next step, I will mix some ivory tone um, again far away from pure white. And with this, I will add um, little highlights on the side of the teeth, a bit like as if this these were little gemstones and. Uh, I wanted to put a little bit light on them. Not too much. And if I do too much, I use the gypsy brush to correct my mistake. <laughs> yeah, you can see you can work out these, um, these teeth one after another and it makes a really nice uh, effect on the eye, I think. It makes them look sharper somehow. Yeah. Pointier, dangerous. 
Yeah, I mean, he could he could also attach so, a jaw of, of a cow or something up there. Yeah, that's not as impressive. It will not, not be so intimidating. So I guess he just jumped into that water and dragged out the most ferocious beast he could he could find. And uh, yeah. That's, that's what did you expect of a, of a goat. Yeah, it's a brave goat, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, that looks impressive now. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm really sharp at the edges. No, it looks really menacing, and that's uh, that's a good goal. As the very last step, we can use uh, nearly pure white to try to hit just the very very tips here of of the teeth. Um, but this is something where you can take way more time and patience. You don't need, you don't even have to do that for all the teeth. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Only for for the for some prominent uh, parts, like here. those would catch the most light, basically. In this area here, but I think it's yeah, it looks already quite cool. Yeah, I like it. So what you can again test out is to take some water and um, uh, just paint some of them uh, up with with the water, and then check if you like them uh, glossy, and if so, apply some varnish to it. Actually, which is also important, is to um, check it back with the miniature and uh, see if this is going in a good direction. Oh, yeah, I think it fits really well. Okay, so the very last step would be to paint uh, these little straps also here that are to the left and the right of the jaw, much like um, the straps here around this crab belt. And uh, then we would also paint, uh, paint up the metal uh, off cam. And um, yeah, we'll be back in a second. After fixing the the little details on the banner, this is how uh, Brunchard will look more or less when we once we attach this to the to the to the banner pole. Okay, and this concludes actually the part of the horns, hooves, and bones episode of uh, the Painting Buddha Academy. Thanks again to Matti for his uh, expertise and his opinion <laughs> and his help. And um, yeah, see you again for the next part which will be wood share and enjoy